AI being very helpful for us to predict the future demand, a future travel pattern, future housing demand, future energy demand, using AI to render a uh, counterfactual, render a city that does not exist today, but exists in our imagination, right? AI can help us render the city in a format that's easy to communicate and easy to be understood by the public. With the help of Gemini AI, we can bring the Copenhagen style of the bicycle infrastructure, overlay it on top of the Boston infrastructure and Boston uh, building one, so that Bostonian can have a tangible sense if we promote and build bicycle as such, what our city will look like. We've been trying a lot of different methods, but recently the reinforced learning based control strategy, right, that can help us better dispatch the bus from the terminal. In this process, through this uh, AI as a help, we can effectively distribute the bus headway much more evenly, so therefore reduce the waiting time and everybody improve. Particularly, this can be done without adding significant investment of buying new buses or hiring new drivers. Why a main technician is the expert, expert and actually do the mechanical work, but he needs two assistants to hold, the, hold the, the wheel, right? So you need a three-person team to conduct this job. Now we are working with China Airport to say, can we change that from three-person operation? We cannot do, to do it at zero person yet, right? The robot is not good enough to, to handle the whole thing, but we can change it from three-person operation to a one-person operation. Right. So the technician still be the main one control the process, but with a robotic to facilitate this process. Right. This is the, the area where human and machine interaction and the joint design of the team uh, is why that's the focus here. To change that uh, uh, behavior, they typically say we say there are three tools to do that. Uh, the price, the rules, and the norms. The price is market mechanism, right? We have a lot of ideas through dynamic pricing, congestion pricing, to induce people t towards low carbon and active travel. There are also rules, right? There's certain things like Singapore, uh, they also have a very specific physical intervention in that, right? So that's through this uh, uh, public policy process. But the third part is the most uh, effective, but also most difficult one, right? It takes a long time and the patience to build, Right, but I think that's where planners have this longer horizon to achieve this goal. We are a huge country. We have 5,500 cities. 3,800 of them are below 50,000 people. And on average, a Brazilian travels to get to a doctor is 72 kilometers. So imagine that on average. If, it, if it's a health specialist, it's 155. So this displacement, it's really a challenge around equity to access.
We train local nurses and equip them with the right devices and connectivity so that the doctors can also have a greater uh, information around the patient's health. Not only a video consultation, but also more complex exams like a teleultrasound for a pregnant woman, uh, skin cancer detection, cervical cancer detection, and so many other possibilities around this combination of telemedicine and devices. In the north and northeast of Brazil, the deadliest kind of cancer is cervical cancer. And it's a disease that for wealthy women in wealthier countries or even regions in Brazil, it's not even a concern anymore. But for these women, it's the deadliest kind of cancer and it's highly curable and preventable if you do the treatment early on, right? If you do prevention and early detection. What we are doing now is implementing AI around a specific part of this screening process that's called the coposcopy. It's an image of the women's uterus and we're training the model to analyze the images so that the AI can help detect the likelihood of that image being uh, a cancer, right? So we speed up the diagnosing process. We got her to do the exam and she actually had uh, cervical cancer and we detected it uh, early enough so that she could be treated. We took her to a hospital, she went into surgery and now she's healthy and well. And I think this really shows the challenge around this disease. So I'll give you one example from a hospital in Brazil. In just one month, with a small operation that they started, they reduced 70 tons of CO2 emissions. And this, in a large scale in Brazil, could go up to 40 million tons of reducing the carbon footprint of the sector. So we see as a huge potential as well. Mm -hmm. 